a little while back, we got a big update for Photoshop. It's up to Photoshop version 2024 now. Um, that was in September of 2023. It's, uh, it's October and it's Adobe Max week. Well, we didn't get a big Photoshop update because that just happened. They did update Camera Raw. So I'm gonna put a link in the description because it's got uh, a link to my update video, the bigger update video for Photoshop last month, as well as what they released for Lightroom this week. But in this video, let's take a look at some of the new features that we have inside of Camera Raw. Uh, the first thing we'll go over is the lens blur. It's an early access feature, meaning they're looking for feedback, but they put it in here. Um, it, it works okay. We have this feature in Photoshop. I would say if you're in Camera Raw, you're probably a Photoshop user. So I would use the neural filter depth blur in Photoshop over this, but let's take a look at how it works. I'm gonna use a photo. It's not gonna work perfect on, but it actually demonstrates some features really well. And then I'll show you a little bit better example here. So the way it works, it's a panel over here. You click apply. And when you click apply, it's automatically gonna do some analyzing of the photo to try to find the subjects. All right, it does a pretty good job and you'll be able to change that uh, as well. But it'll try to find the subjects and your first setting is the blur amount. So this is how much blur. Zero means nothing and you can crank it up to 100. That's gonna be the full amount of blur. Again, always, I think moderation is always the key for a tool like this because I think you can make your photo look fake really fast. From there, you can expand that section and go into the bokeh or bokeh, depending on how you like to say it. Please don't let me know how you like to say it, but there's some creative options here. The first one's gonna be your default and your modern lenses. And then if you wanna go creative, there's some options in there on how you can uh, modify it. We come down here to focal range. This is, this is the reason why I use this photo because it actually demonstrates focal range really well. This whole focal range section is probably the most important section that we have in this, is, is showing you the range of focus from front to back and giving you the option to focus the photo from front to back, all right? One of the things you can do is choose visualize depth and that's gonna give you a depth map of what the analyzation, remember it did some analyzing when you opened it up. This is gonna give you a way to analyze or to view how it analyzes the photo. So you're, it's gonna start off, it's mostly white and you're not really seeing a lot of white down here, but white, would be the extreme front of the photo as we get to white yellow. So yellow again, toward the front of the photo. As we get into oranges and some pinks, we're going into the middle of the photo. And as we graduate to the purples and dark purples, we're going to the back of the photo. So from front to back, if you were to think of it that way. If you were to look at this focal range section, that's exactly what it does. The left side is yellow, then we go to oranges, pinks, reds, purples. So from there, all right? So let's turn off the visualization section off and you get an option. Do you want to do a subject focus, which it'll automatically detect subjects similar to, you know, masking is doing subject detection. So that feature is just pushed down to here. Or you can do point focus, which you're just going to click on a point in the photo to focus. You'll usually get your best results from doing subject focus here. All right, so it's gonna detect the subject. Now, you've got this little adjustment section below where you can adjust it if you want to. You can affect the focal range of the photo. The moment you click on one of these bars, it's gonna take you off subject and onto point focus, okay? So you can't, you can't essentially, it's not really using the subject focus when you start messing around with the bars that we have here. But let's bring it all the way to the right and take the left side all the way to the left. What you've just done here is you've done nothing. You said make the entire photo in focus, which is essentially letting this filter or this panel do nothing. If you look at the before and the after, there are no changes to it. But let's say we bring this in really skinny toward the left-hand side. Look at that small sliver of focus in the front and then everything in back starts falling out of focus. As you start bringing this over to the right, we're now focusing on the yellow, remember? the visual depth map that we saw here, the yellow parts of the photo. So we're now focusing on the yellow. As we bring that in, now we're gonna be focusing on the orange pink parts of the photo, which are this area directly behind them. So you notice that's not blurred back there, but the front and the back are. And then as you continue to march this over to the right, now you're saying bring the back in focus 
and leave everything in the front out of focus. Okay, so I'm gonna get off of this photo because that really helps demonstrate what that focal range does, but I don't necessarily think that's a good example for it. So let's switch over to this photo. But first, very, very quick word from our sponsor. I promise I'll keep it around 30 seconds. Uh, swing by my learning center. It'll help you navigate all the new updates to Lightroom and Photoshop as well. Some FAQs and other links you might want to check out. I also have a real world Photoshop AI course, which shows you how to use all this new AI stuff in Photoshop in the real world, not all the fake stuff that you see. Um, real world examples that I think will help. Also, my Photoshop how-to course has been updated to take advantage of some of the new stuff in there. And that's a great course for intermediate people that, you know, you kind of know the basics and you just want a good how-to course without searching all over the place for all these different ways to do things. And then finally, my capstone Photoshop system, Lightroom system courses. Those are courses meant for beginners to get you from a beginner to a solid intermediate level. Those courses have been updated as well. So yeah, to find all the free videos as well as some of the courses that are on sale over on the website. All right, so let's get back over to lens bar. So we're gonna turn it on. We're gonna crank up that blur amount. Uh, I've got my subject focus still locked in here. And I think overall this, this did what it was supposed to do for the photo. The one section we haven't gone over is gonna be the refine section. So with refine, what we're able to do is use a brush to take areas that Photoshop made blurry that were in focus and bring them back into focus or take an area that Photoshop isn't affecting and make it blurry. So you've got a focus brush and a blur brush. So for example, I could take the blur brush and I could paint, and you've got an amount setting over here, so let's crank that up. So we could take that and we could brush over on this little leaf over here. We can make that blurry, maybe even everything up here, make the, all of that blurry. And I think that would make the photo look better. Okay, or look a little bit, what we're trying to do is trying to just simplify the photo, right? Trying to make our subject really stand out. I'd argue we could probably do that by some cropping too, but this makes a good tutorial image. So we'll go in there, we blurred parts of the photo. Then we can go over here into focus and we can bring parts of the photo. The key is that lens blur has blurred back into focus, okay? This background here, this was out of focus to begin with. Remember the before photo? It's not very in focus to begin with. So no matter what, I can't ever bring that back into focus. However, if there was any blur happening, I could bring that. So there is a little bit of blur back here. Again, let's crank up, make sure our focus amount, but you'll see a little bit of it start to happen here. See, I brought a little bit of that back into focus. So you can brush all your basic brush settings there, size, feather, flow, you can even auto mask where it's going to uh, help you around some of those edges there. All right, so that is your lens blur. And I would just <laughs> plead that we, we don't, I, I don't think this was a very good photo to use it on. So I just plead like, look at that background blur back there. That's not very realistic. So please, please, please don't use it for fake blurs um, of this magnitude. I think it works best on a photo where it's already got a little bit of blur and you just want to enhance it a little bit, maybe remove some more distractions in there. Let's move up to the color mixer. So the color mixer, essentially in, in Lightroom, it used to be called HSL, but we've got this mixer section of it where we can affect hue, saturation, and luminance, and that hasn't changed. That's exactly the same as it always was. So we're not gonna work on that. What we do get is we get point color. And this feature is really for people that wanna dive deep into specific colors in their photo. They really wanna work on a very, very specific color, okay? So what you do is you grab the eyedropper and then you go click on the color that you want. So we're gonna click over there. I'm actually gonna, there's a little, uh, there's a little option over down at the bottom here. It's a little overlay. So it's gonna just show you, it's gonna make everything else gray and just show you in color, the color that you clicked on. And then you can grab the eyedropper and click on another color if you want. You can see we can have multiple ones there. You can right click to delete the swatches if you want. But let's turn on that range so we can see what's going on there. So essentially you're working on that very specific color. You can move the dots to affect the hue, saturation, or luminance of this color just by moving those little dots around, up and down. Or you can move the adjustment sliders that you see below here. They're, they're both 
two different ways to do the same exact thing. You can see the little dot moving as I move the slider down here. So it's just whether you wanna do it visually on here or whether you wanna do it with the sliders that you see here, okay? Two different ways to do the same thing. Below that, you're gonna get range. Range is essentially how much spill over into nearby colors are you gonna let happen? What that means is I bring it down to zero. We are really, really focusing on that one color I clicked on, and it's not gonna let it spill over to nearby colors, colors that might be similar in color range. Now, that will help you be very accurate in affecting one color. It could look like it was, it could look like it's blocky, and you can see some, some very harsh transitions between certain areas, not in all photos, but it could look like that, all right? Let's keep that that uh, that uh, overlay on there. As I increase it, you'll see zero, 100, zero, 100. It's not drastically changing it, but it is letting the range of our adjustment here spill over into nearby colors to make those transitions look just a little bit smoother. So okay, no right or wrong answer for this stuff. It's, it's whatever is right for your photo, just so you know what the adjustments do. From there, we also have one little triangle we can expand downward to show us advanced features. So if just having range wasn't enough for you, you can actually control the hue range, the saturation range, and the luminance range. So you get ultimate control over, again, like I said, this that one little color that we clicked on, you can get really deep down, uh, accurate control over those things. I mentioned it earlier, I don't think most people are gonna to have to go this far, but people that are really fanatical about color wanna really attack a specific color in the photo. Uh, you now have point color. I think the color mixer is probably gonna work for most people. And then the last thing would be under your masking setting, because everything we just did in point color is actually, it's global to the entire photo, right? However, let's say I make a mask, right? And I'm just affecting a very small part of the photo. Well, as you scroll down here, you're gonna see you also get the point color panel inside of there. So rather than affecting the whole photo, you can start to affect the point color, the specific color of an area within a mask. So that way you're really, you're, you're, you're not doing anything global. You're forcing whatever color that you're gonna work with there to only work within whatever mask that you create. There's one other new feature that you might see in the basic panel and it's right at the top of it, and you're gonna see auto, you'll see black and white, and you'll see HDR, you'll see a little button for that. That is not your typical photo merge HDR that you're used to. This is editing a photo on an HDR screen in an HDR space, exporting this photo in an HDR format for other HDR screens and places where you can share these. So few screens have this ability, so few apps and places that we look at our photos have this ability. I can't even show it to you because it can't be recorded. So uh, here's the deal on this. I'm not gonna talk much about it other than to point you to my learning center. I put two links in there, okay? One's to Adobe, one's to another gentleman, Greg Benz, who also does tutorials and he explains it pretty well. So if you wanna find out more about that HDR feature, uh, go check out the learning center links that I have on there. Also, if you haven't seen my new, uh, or my what's new inside of Photoshop 2024 video that I did last month, that's a great place to go next.